So welcome, Maestro Muspratt. Thank you, Diana. So let's start off with the first show of the season, Tchaikovsky and Beethoven. What would you like to know? Everything. Okay. Everything. So, so first of all, like, what makes this show special? Why should somebody come? Well, they're two, if I can use the word masterpieces, they're gorgeous masterpieces of music that everybody could or would love, even if you don't know them, but you do know them. They're, they're just magnificent pieces of music. Beethoven, we're gonna start with Beethoven. Okay. He wrote it in 1812, right after his, like the guy he hated so much, Napoleon was defeated in Moscow. He was very, very happy. And he breaks all the rules in the piece. I mean, the introduction is longer than any introduction. The second movement is a funeral march. And when he finished the funeral march on December 8th, 1813, the audience stood and made him repeat it, which never happened before, any ever before. There's supposed to be a trio and a minuet after this in a symphony, you know, in Austria. He doesn't do it. He does a big scherzo. It's a rollicking dance party. And the last movement is, well, we call it an arm buster because it's nobody ever heard music like this before. And it's, it's just a big party. So, and it's so does the funeral represent Napoleon's funeral and then the party after yeah, he died? Maybe, maybe. Is yeah. that what that means? And it's funny because we have names for these movements. Like we call it Johnny One Note because it goes like this. Yan, tan, 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 tan. It's just a couple of notes. And it becomes this beautiful, almost like prayer. You know, it just, again, it's Beethoven. And he was totally deaf when he conducted it. It was a disaster because he would even yell when it was forte. <laughs> He'd yell loud and in German, of course, like this, because he couldn't hear anything. But, and I mean, when you think of this, of all the men in the world who should not be deaf by the time they're 30 years old. Right. It, can't be Beethoven. What if you do that to just oh. reenact the moment? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> actually, if if you ask the orchestra, they'll tell you how much I grunt. I don't even know I'm doing it, but I'm doing this all the whole time inside, like, and they hear me grunting, so I grunt all the time. Yeah. So that's that's the Beethoven part. Now, what about the Tchaikovsky part? So the Tchaikovsky, we have Esmir Eyes Kim, Kim coming back, Diana, because last year she played Corn Gold for us. Uh, people went bonkers over her. They should. She's 17 years old. She is going, Paul and I say, we're going to grab her now because in two years we won't be able to get her. She so was, she's 17, but she studied with like Edsat Perlman, correct? This summer, she was one of the 12 students from all over the world that spend a month with Itzhak Perlman at his camp. Wow. So you think if Itzhak Perlman is choosing you and saying right. this, and the piece is gorgeous. I mean, it's just like gorgeous, but it's really, really, really hard. I mean, the first people that, try, that he took it to, the great violinist, Leopold Auer, who is the great violinist in Russia, said it's co completely unplayable. Completely. Then he took it to this German violinist in Switzerland. Completely unplayable. What makes that unplayable? Like the too fingering, hard. or it's too hard, or it's, it's too, too fast, or? It's too hard. Just too hard. Yeah. But now, Esme, who is 17, is playing it and she'll knock our socks off. But she's like a prodigy and she doesn't act 17 or look 17. I mean, she's very mature and she's very poised and she's just so captivating. There's something about yeah. her too. She's a beautiful girl. Yeah. And I think that that she's, I mean, I'm sure she's worked very hard. I'm not saying that she just was born this way, but yeah. she is, I yeah. mean, this is exceptionally unusual, unusual, right? This sort of talent in such a young person. Yes, and both her mother and father, I'm sure you know this, play in our orchestra at times. Mm -hmm. And they play in the Chicago Symphony too, and they're violinists. But she's been coming to our concerts since she was two years old. I remember her mom bringing her on her shoulder and her sleeping you know, when she was two years old. And now, I don't know how this happened, but I think what you say about her, she's humble, she's kind, she um, practices. Even when she's finished a concerto, you go back at intermission and she's in her dressing room practicing. 
<laughs> and yet she's really normal. Right. She's really normal. Like, hi, how are you today? You know, mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, captivating. I like your word. It's great. So the Tchaikovsky piece that she, so that's the second act. That's the second act. Okay. Yeah. It's about 35 minutes long. And it's just amazing. It's just an amazing piece. I think she definitely is. See her now while you can here, right? Yes. She will be. Yeah, someday we'll be like, she'll be like, oh, hi, Kirk. And I'll be like, hi, I'm watching you at Carnegie Hall or something like that. Yeah. Which we hope for. And, it, and the orchestra plays with her, of course, oh, accompanies yeah. her. Oh, and yeah. And what piece is she playing, did you say again? The Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Okay. You betcha.